Mike, obviously a, a good defense there for Georgia, all the statistics that they have. I guess what made it so tough uh, to get going offensively against them? Uh, I thought that early on we uh, – <clears throat> I thought we did some good things. There was kind of a, a feel-out process to see what, uh, you know, we were capable of doing. I mean, they're kind of a vaunted group. And then – but I didn't think it took us uh, too long. I think we were – and not really tentative, but just sort of feeling our way through the situation. And then I thought we started moving the ball quite well. I, did, I thought we left uh, two obvious uh, scores out there, you know, uh, 14 points, which would not be too tough to have. And then um, uh, so I think uh, we did more good things than bad, uh, but I thought that we could have, uh, you know, we could have finished drives better. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, they're doing what they can to make it difficult, and they're good at making it difficult. And we had others make it difficult, too. I'm sure you guys saw the same game I did. And then um, <clears throat> uh, some almost looked like they're trying to do an homage to um, aspects of the Pac-12. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. So that's how I saw it offensively. Coach, it seemed like uh, Will actually may have had a little better ball placement game, but drops continue to kind of be an issue with you. I mean, you, how do you address that with Will, and how do you kind of keep him focused on all that? I thought he got better. I thought the better he got at pushing the ball downfield, the better he threw it. Uh, I do think drops was an issue. I think that. Uh, you know, I think that in a few cases, and not across the board, a few cases, some receivers searching for the sideline rather than the the field. Um, and I do think we have to, be, uh, to become tougher at that receiver position. You know, across the board, we have some skilled guys. We have some talented guys. But I think we need some tougher guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, guys that just, uh, you know, crave the ball. I mean, or that uh, do – do the best they can to be polite about it, but aren't very good at being polite about it. The greatest receivers I've ever had are, are, are the ones that um, try to be polite about it, but you can tell they're merely trying to be polite about it because they shamelessly want the ball. They shamelessly want the ball every play. They're the guys that should have the ball. Somebody else shouldn't have the ball. They should have the ball. Who should you throw it to? Well, you know, I mean, this guy's open, that guy's open, but at the, the bottom line, them okay and those are the kind of receivers you want right now we've got these uh you know gentlemanly guys that uh, they like to make plays and they've got some skill and they do some good things but you know we want somebody that just in a very beastly fashion uh almost needs to have the ball and we don't quite have that Mike, I was curious with uh, their offense, kind of the ways that they use tight ends and, and utilize the guys they have there. Do you see anything from that that you could maybe incorporate in, into the way you guys run your offense? Well, not really. I mean, it, it goes uh, – some of it, you know uh, – uh, yeah, I could use the whole unit over there, as a matter of fact. I mean, I, I let, um, uh, every measurable that those guys have over there, we could use every one of them. I mean, I can't think of really any we can't use. Um, the, uh, but you know, um, <clears throat> the offense and the measurables go hand in hand a little bit. Um, I did think we did a good job stopping the run for the most part. Uh, you know, to win, they have to run the ball and, and, you know, we stuffed the run for a period of time, uh, and a significant portion too, uh, stuffed the run and then, um, and then let them get off the hook on some big plays. Uh, which was unfortunate, you know, kind <clears> of <throat> playing with uh, eight instead of 11. But um, we did stop the run against them at uh, significant times at time, and I thought that was uh, pretty laudable by our group. Which obviously, you know, your development, your program is, you know, a little bit behind where George's is. But you know, what steps do you feel like that this program needs to take to be competitive and win these kind of games in the years ahead? 
Well, she, well. First of all, I think uh, <clears throat> I think I'll ask uh, every other team in the nation that's below them what their thoughts are, and maybe make a collective of uh, ideas and select what I think are the best ones. Um, now you just keep doing what you're doing and doing it better is the short answer, you know. Coach, early in the year, you mentioned um, when you, you guys were playing some of your best football, how your guys had responded from adversity. And I know you can't really talk about referee calls tonight, but when, it seemed like when things went bad against your defense. Or I could. It cost money. And, 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 and somebody probably ought to at some point. Uh, just right now, it's not going to be me. But there are a lot of people that watch that game. So, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> My faith rests with them. All right, go ahead. Well, you just have to. That's the thing is you just got to be focused on the next play. I mean, um, you know, positive or negative uh, adversity, it doesn't excuse it. But, um, um, you know, you just have to stay uh, focused and move forward. That's really all you've got. Besides the obvious talent, what makes Georgia so tough to run the ball against, particularly in short yardage situations? Well, I, th I think there's definitely that aspect of it. And then the other thing is, is uh, you know, they transition. You know, the, the big the one thing Georgia's always done a pretty good job of uh, is transitioning. And then once in a while, you catch a guy that doesn't have low pads. They generally do. Um, uh, and not only do they transition, they're kind of a – because they're not just a come-up field group. They're kind of – you know, I call it catch and read, but uh, uh, pull and yank would probably be more accurate. You know, they get in there and just <clears throat> get in the middle of your body and stalemate one guy, yank the other guy. And, they, and they've uh, – at least uh, Kirby's teams have always been pretty good at that. I guess for, for you guys, how tough was it, you know, that stretch where, you know, Zavion has the punt return and then right out of the half, two plays, 75 yards for, for Georgia, to, Georgia to kind of, you know, regain the momentum there? Yeah, well, that wasn't good at all. As a matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there were several issues with that play. All right. What, how'd you feel about your team just preparation, playing the number one team in the, na in the nation, and just their mentality going into this game? I, I thought it was good. I thought our preparation was good. I thought mentality was good. You know, big plays was the biggest thing that haunted us. Some situational stuff on offense. I mean, there's easily two scores wrapped up there, and then there's easily uh, two scores wrapped up in uh, big plays, just like one play, big plays. You know, you, you get that, then you know, we're in it or we win, you know. Coach, you would say that with Alabama, your team looked a little bit scared. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but at least tonight it looked like... I thought we played Georgia better than we played Alabama. Yeah. No, I thought I thought we played... Um, I thought... Uh, well, this year, at least anyway, I thought uh, Georgia presented a bigger challenge, and I thought we played uh, Georgia better than we played Alabama. I, I thought I'm in... <coughs> <laughs> I thought our mentality was far better against Georgia. Yeah. I guess kind of entering the home stretch of the season here, you know, what's kind of the, the message to your team and, and the approach to East Tennessee State before uh, obviously the end <coughs> coming up? Well, we need to worry about ourselves, get better ourselves. <coughs> you know, I think there's – uh, too much of that. You, you try to fight that, but everybody, the opponent this, the opponent that, the opponent the other thing. Well, that's the matchup. Um, that's what you're going to tee it up against. But the most important thing each week is that you get incrementally better. And I think um, those guys in a productive fashion that can focus on themselves. <laughs> and improve themselves. Uh, that can focus on themselves, improve themselves, and the ones that do the best job. That's what we got to do. We got to worry about ourselves. Be a better player. It wouldn't no matter what position you play, if you're the best player on the team or the worst, uh, the, the other team's got a guy that's uh, 
<clears throat> basically congruent to you. They have a best player. They have a worst player. <clears throat> they have a scout team flanker. They have a uh, starting running back. You got to you got to do. You know, you got to you got to be better than that guy in that role relative to his team, and you've got to <clears throat> try to improve each week. You know, try to be the best at that each week. And I think people often get lost in that rather than competing with themselves and trying to be be the best that they can be because that's where the growth comes. I mean, you might be better than this guy. Well, it's, all right, fine, that's great. You already, but you know, if, if you're not growing yourself, you're not getting anywhere. You know, you're just signed up. <laughs>